Greetings, everyone. I'm Brad Talinsky, and welcome to The High Five on Herb.co. The premise is simple. We're going to dig into five topics with our special guests and see where it takes us. First, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Infinite CBD, makers of a wide variety of CBD products. And the good news is Infinite is now offering 20% off any of their products to High Five viewers. Uh, just use the code High 520 at the checkout and you'll be all set. Now let's welcome our special guest. What can I say? This man is a serious player in the music and cannabis world. He plays bass in System of a Down, one of the most important bands of our generation. And we'll be talking about his equally innovative new band, North Kingsley. They have some new music dropping very, very soon. And he is the driving force behind the kick-ass cannabis brand 22 Red. Hey, everyone, it's Shavo Adagian. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, brother. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your uh, new creative collective, North Kingsley, and how that came together. Going 10 years back, I did a, pro uh, a small project with RZA from Wu-Tang Clan, and um, I did, like, I engineered the whole thing. I produced the whole thing. I just was too involved, right? Well, fast forward, I wanted to do something, but I kind of wanted to do it on my own this time around. And mm -hmm. um, I want, there, there was a new uh, mu uh, music program called Logic. It's not new, but it's new for me. It was new for me. I wanted to learn it. I met this guy that I, um, that I thought was amazing, and he was so good at it. And um, he, was, he, he was at the studio recording with the, with a vocalist named Ray Hawthorne. And um, by the second and third time, we already had something. We started like working on some beats and music and all my ideas were already coming around and he was just boom, 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 like fast, you know? And when that happened, I kind of asked him, I said, dude, I think we should just start something together. Uh, he's a big fan of System and, you know, he knew me that way. So it was right away, like, boom, let's go. From your first series, like uh, your, the song Like That, it's one of my favorite jams of the year. It's so Thank you. Thank great. you so much. Look, it just worked with him, the music-wise, you know? And uh, he brought in Ray. Next thing you know, we have three, four songs. I still wasn't ready to name it. I still wasn't ready to be in another band. I just wanted to make some music, you know what I mean? But as it progressed and as we grabbed a hold of our style and we developed something new. So um, it worked, man. And we just started making music, started writing music. And within a year, I was like, this is it, bro. This is something happening here. We had seven songs. And uh, we started naming it and we went with North Kingsley because that's the street I grew up on in Hollywood. Uh, it's just kind of came to me out of nowhere. There was a lot of names on the table and I kind of was like, dude, North Kingsley would sound really cool because no one knows what it is. Uh, it's the first address I ever had to memorize. I, I lived there from- It's sort, of, sort of like Cypress Hill or something like that. Exactly, bro. <laughs> exactly. The first address, I, I was 1336 North Kingsley Drive in Hollywood. That's where I grew up. Like, so- Yeah a thing in my head, you know, I was like, there's so much I could talk about this address, this name, you know, I, it's the first time I witnessed gangs, drugs, sex, like I saw hookers on the street, I saw gangs fighting, I saw, I was skateboarding at the time, like religiously, that was my thing, it was like, every corner looked, was a skating block, something I can do, a trick, you know, uh, I started playing guitar there, uh, just all sorts of stuff, so it was perfect, and that's how it started, bro, we dropped volume one, August 14th, with volume two, we were supposed to drop it on the 23rd, but the war in Armenia was really weighing on me. And it was hard for me to talk about new music when my people are getting, you know, are in a war. And it was just rough, man. I couldn't really release music at the time. So we, again, pushed it. Now we're doing it December 4th, which is this Friday. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping you know, fingers crossed, we'll have a good, um, uh, you know, reception. What can we expect out of the three new songs? Um, we have a collab with, uh, we have a feature actually, an old friend of mine came in and I haven't announced it yet. Um, Riza from Wu-Tang Clan came it's a, through. It's a good friend to have. Yeah, dude. I mean, he's <laughs> like, I, his kid was my ri ring boy when, when I got married 10 years ago. We, we got really close. We've been wow. really close and we've remained friends. Our wives are friends now. Uh, our kids, you know, so it's really cool. He's a really cool dude, man. And, you know, if anyone knows Riza, you know, he's like the man dude you know and uh, just to be able to work with him is a is a joy and an honor and uh when he came through i called him up i said yo 
got this new thing. He goes, I want to get on it. Right away, I didn't even have to ask him. He was like, I got to get on there. And I'm like, come on, you haven't even heard it. He came through, we played him three tracks. He's like, any one of them. And I'm like, you pick it. So he picked False Idols. The only thing I can compare North Kingsley with System with is that every track has a different vibe, but it's right. still the DNA of the same people making it. So we, we have so, so many different influences. That's what it is, man. I've loved rock, heavy metal, speed metal, Norwegian black metal. I love that, which comes off on in System. But I've yeah. also loved Public Enemy and WA, Wu-Tang Clan, Rakim. I've had all this stuff that I love and adore. So yeah. um, having said that, it's a, it's not rack rock, sorry, rap rock. It's not that because that's been done. Like I said, I don't want to be compared, but it's another new genre. I guess it's a new, um, it has a dark tone. It does. It's a, I try to make it more uplifting, but it always has that DNA of ours. That's like darker a little just dim. So having said all that, man, North Kingsley, December 4th, the lookout, three new tracks. We already have volume three and four ready to go, you know, and hopefully once, I don't know if it's the vaccine that's going to do it for us or what it's going to be. I'm so, totally clueless of what is going to come in the next few months. We're, uh, we're going to get there soon. Just start, you can start rehearsing, start, start shedding yeah, that stuff, <laughs> start taking it into your basement. Okay. Azerbaijan and Turkey attacked Armenia September 27th. It was very tactical it was very thought out it was the way they did it they hit us during covid they hit us during an election where all minds were elsewhere and they've also they also hired lobbyists throughout the world to america they planted journalists in major places like new york times who reported the opposite of what's going on they um they hired social media crews to denounce what's going on and built a fake truth. They keep bending the truth to the point where it, it's like we attack them. We are a little nation of 3 million people. Artsakh, which is the land that they're fighting over, is an independent republic that's been Armenia for the last 3,000 years. In 1920 or something like that, Stalin, that dude to appease Turkey gave a land that was Armenia to Azerbaijan. Here you go, guys, you have a country now. Now there's a country and then in the 1920s, a new country was born, Azerbaijan, right? No history, no nothing. When the Soviet Union broke apart, Artsakh went independent again. We took over, we took back our lands. And by the way, this whole time during the, the 90 years they were, there was a Soviet Union you know, or 70 years there was a Soviet Union, we, it remained mostly Armenian. The, the, the land. We have monasteries there for thousands of years. We have churches that have been existing there for like 350 AD since then. Um, with our handwriting on there, our alphabet, Armenia has its own alphabet. There's the alphabet all over the place. Um, and uh, so they attacked that land of 150,000 people. They attacked civilians. They attacked churches. They attacked hospitals. They bombed with bombs that they're not supposed to use. So it's war crimes. They committed so many war crimes onto our people during a time where no, none of the world was really watching. And since they're rich with natural resources like oil and such, the world kind of closed their eyes. All the countries that um, could have helped, minus a few, like France helped a lot. France right away was like, this is wrong. Um, the Dutch said, this is wrong. Um, but of course, America didn't, you know, because we have too much, uh, too much relationships with Turkey and too many relationships with Azerbaijan through oil and money and power. So they looked the other way and we got demolished. A few weeks back, our prime minister um, kind of gave them that land, a few portions of the land and kind of ended the war because we were, you know, it's rough. You're going against Turkey, which is 80 million people. You're going against Azerbaijan, which is 10 million people. Armenia only has 3 million and that land that we're fighting over has only 150,000 people. So at the moment, there's 100,000 people that are displaced all over Armenia that don't have a place to go. Kids, old people, just families have no home because they took them over. And if you watch social media, if you really do some digging, these guys are doing some crazy shit, man. They're showing soldiers like um, destroying church, old monasteries, just like spitting at it. 
cutting off old. Okay, we still have people. Genocide, oh, we, genocide. You get rid of the culture cultural, and get rid of the people. Cultural genocide happening right now. As I'm talking to you, something's going on over there. Yeah, because yeah. they're still doing it and the world is still looking the other way. Oh, they solved this. No, they didn't. Re there was no res resolution. The resolution was us saying, okay, dude, like we're tired of losing 17 year olds and we got to end it. So here, and I don't even know if that was a good decision to make. So r right now, Armenia is kind of in a civil unrest right now because the prime minister kind of made these decisions and gave him the land on his own, um, on his own merit of like, he thought that was the right thing to do and the only thing to do. And there's half the country saying, you shouldn't have done that. The other half is saying that's the only thing he had left to do. We talked with each other, uh, you know, about a month and a half ago, and it seemed like system sort of wasn't even on the horizon. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's two new songs that drop. Uh, yeah. So what happened was, Couple of weeks after the war, the war, a uh, one week while the war is going on, one week after, where John, our drummer, sent a text to the whole group and said, "Yo, we got to do something, man." And I think we were all feeling it. I was gonna do it. I'm sure each member wanted to do it, but he was the first to like press the button, send, and everybody reacted like, "Fuck yeah, let's go, let's do something." Darren right away said, "Yo, I have a song. I have a song that's about this. I wrote it a year ago. It was gonna go to Scars on Broadway, but it really fits the mold at the moment." Let's go, we don't have time to waste. So that's what went down. And we did that and then it was kind of mid-tempo. The music was mid-tempo with harmonies and stuff. So it was protect the land, of course. And um, so we thought about, let's say, let's, let's, let's bring some, cause you know, system sold, not one dimensional. We have so many different sounds. We're like, let's also do a heavier, heavier track. And you know, Darren, John and I had gone in uh, in 2017 and worked on some music together. And Genocidal Humanoids is one of those songs. And it was just so thrashy and so us, it just made sense to drop both. And uh, dude, I would have done 10 more if I could have, you know, <laughs> uh, we have enough material to do. So the music is available for those on, ba on your Bandcamp page, but mm -hmm. the proceeds are gonna go to the Armenia Fund? Yes, the Armenia Fund at the moment is, um, uh, sending aid to all of the displaced people. Uh, we're, we're helping them out, the kids, the orphans. So many people lost their brothers, lost their fathers, lost their husbands. It's just a sad situation, man. Well, I social justice is very important to us at uh, herb.co. And, you know, I have to thank you for, for sharing that, which I know it, it's, it's, it's a very painful situation, but it is. it's a good thing to definitely talk about and to get that word out there. Let's Sir. talk a bit about 22 Red, your cannabis company. Mm -hmm. um, when, did you, when did you start that? When did- uh, uh, This started when? about, 22 Red started about two and a half years ago. Weed has always been something in my life, right? Since I was like 20 years old, but yeah. it was, and throughout the years when it got legal in America or in certain parts of America, in Cali, for example, in 06, a lot of companies, a lot of people came up to me, man, let's name a, a strain after you. Let's do this. Let's do that. But I was never really into it. I was just a smoker. And I'm like, dude, as long if, if I don't have my hands on it, then I don't want to be a part of it because who knows what you're going to do with it. You know, um, I'm just going to sit here and smoke it. You handle it. Um, I teamed up, me and my one of my best friends in the world who I've known since I was like seven, eight years old. Uh, we always, he's, he's in the fashion industry. We've always talked about doing something together, a brand, something fashionable, something cool, you know, uh, and, uh, we started about two and a half years ago talking about it and getting some, you know, um, you know, traction over it. And then he introduced, not introduced me, but reintroduced me to our friend, Sean, and I've known him forever, but I just, he was always like younger, you know, I knew he grew weed, but I didn't know at what, what lengths he went, you know, I didn't know how big it was, you know? Uh, they took me to one of his grows and the thing was immaculate. I was like, wow, dude, if I'm going to do it, it's got to be with this right here. This is how it's got to go. So that's when it started. And 22 Red was born. Uh, 22 was my birthday. I'm born April 22nd. Uh, married May 22nd. Uh, I was 22 when System got signed. That was 22 <laughs> years before I thought of 22 when I was 44. We started small. Now we're in three states. Uh, hopefully soon to be in four. Um, we have something that we're working on. We're in Cali, Nevada, and Arizona at the moment. We have extracts. We have vape pens. We have, we're also doing CBD. 
uh, we have something new coming up on, on the 7th. We're dropping, December 7th, we're dropping our tinctures. Just hemp CBD, was, I believe in healing. It's yeah. not just getting high. I've had anxiety in my life. I've had sleep issues. And I swear, the, the way we made this with my friend Marcus, who's, uh, who's also the founder and CEO of Nature's Lab, he does all our ex extracts. Um, he just, he included so much, so many percentage of CBD in there that actually affects where you actually feel something. And the, uh, the cost of it, I needed to be affordable. I needed to be reached out by everyone. Everyone could touch it. I'd rather make less money, but be more effective. You know what I'm saying? Because the... Because every, everything will come in due time. I, I believe in quality over quantity always. Where can so people uh, get the uh, CBD uh, product? 22red.com. And then there's like little, you know, it tells you if you want to go to the CBD section, you want to go to the, the apparel section. We also have really, I love fashion. That's how it started. The whole thing started with fashion. So every, we, we don't have merch. We have apparel where I actually like design what we're doing. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've checked it out. Like you, you, your stuff is really cool, man. Every thank you, People thank are you. in for a, a treat if they go up there and yeah, dude. Yeah. check it out. And, you know, we have a section you can check where all the stop, shops that carry us around those three states. And like I said, the apparel is quality shit, man. It's like stuff you would want to wear all day, you know, not just throw it on because it has someone's name on it, a brand name. It's more about it being really cool. And uh, I don't believe in too big of blasting over your branding, you know? So I kind of do like a white t-shirt with a couple of cool little things. I have messages inside the t-shirts, uh, sayings, you know, 22 little, like like a fortune cookie oh, lab, cool. like inside the clothing you'll find somewhere. Um, small branding, like look at the hat that's out. This hat's out right now, by the way, I just threw it out maybe two weeks ago. This is launched two weeks ago. Simple black hat with a cool little 22 doesn't there's no big nothing yeah i hate that me too bro me too i can't <laughs> you, you start stories. feeling like that you're a billboard for the a billboard i don't want no one to be a billboard i want people to enjoy what they're wearing and like be proud of what they're wearing so that's what that's what we did again thank you so much for for joining us uh we got thank one you. more question to go one more topic the high five question of the day brought to you by my sponsors, Infinite uh, CBD, makers of infinitely good CBD products. We know that uh, from even your discussion, there are so many things that you are freakishly good at, but is there something that you're freakishly bad at? Uh, a lot of shit, man. <laughs> I've never tried singing. How's that? I think I'm bad at it. I, I, I don't have the balls to sing. Like I, I know I have words. I've done a little rapping during that first, the chosen thing I did with Rizzo because they just like gave me all this great self-esteem. They're like, dude, you could kill this. You're doing this. Rizzo would be like, dude, come on, kill it. And I did. So you can find that online. But singing wise, I know I can keep a tone. I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not tone deaf, uh, but I've never really sang. And that's something I would love to do one day. So once again, I'd like to thank our guest, Chavo Adagian, uh, who has some new music coming out this Friday. Uh, with his new band, North Kingsley, fantastic. Um, and I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Infinite CBD. Infinite's now offering 20% off all their products to High Five viewers. So get on that. All you need to do is put in the code High Five 20 at the checkout and you'll be all set. Infinite CBD, an infinitely better way to take CBD, check it out. Yeah, man, Brad, so let's get the high five on herb.co. Have a cool day over and out.